So hear me out, you're working on a project, the boss is on your case, and there's no time. Muting the background fast. It could be a street, a beach, or a simple living room. What do you do? Who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters? No, they blocked us. We're gonna AI that shit. Hit the subscribe button and let's get into it. Generating AI images isn't quite new. Just look at all these videos with people pointing at stuff. But in this episode, we'll not only generate them, we'll also make it seem like our character is a part of that AI background. Let's have a look. Here is one of my buddies enjoying the latest hits. The scene seems kind of boring and he looks kind of creepy in the dark. So let's add a background to make it much better. Visit the link in the description and it'll bring you here to the realistic vision model. This is a great AI model and you can generate all kinds of images with it for free. All you need to do is enter your prompt here. Um, let's keep it simple. I'll go with California, living room, cartoon, animation, 3D and soft lighting. Now just hit compute. This will generate a different image every time you hit it. You can give it a try a few times until you find the one that you're happy with. Like this one. Now all you need to do is to drag it to your desktop. You can also use this model offline with more advanced options. Would that be something that you'd like to know more about? Let me know in the comments. Now import the background into After Effects and you'll quickly notice that its quality is in potato reds. But don't worry about it, we'll fix it. Create a new adjustment layer and add a camera lens blur to it. We're gonna increase the blur radius to 20 because we want our character to be in focus. And we'll also increase the roundness to 100% and the aspect ratio to 0.5 for that anamorphic blur. This'll make it look more cinematic. Next, we'll pre-comp the background into its own comp. We'll bring in another adjustment layer over all the layers and we'll add an optics compensation effect and increase it to 39. You can see how it's affecting the scene. We want the exact opposite of this distortion, so we'll switch reverse lens distortion on. To make the layers go together much nicer, we'll add a glow effect. Raise the glow threshold to 98, so only the brightest parts of the scene have the glow. Next, we'll make the radius 200 and intensity 0.5. We'll duplicate it now and increase the radius to 600. Let's also add a noise HLS effect to make everything have the same texture. Switch noise type to grain and increase lightness to 2%. So it's quite subtle. Now if you notice the character doesn't seem to be a part of the scene and that's because of the lighting. To fix this, I'll duplicate the background comp and name it lighting. Now let's bring it over the character layer. Add a Gaussian blur and increase its blurriness to something ridiculous like 102 and change its blending mode to soft light. Now the lighting seems more accurate. Here's before and after. Before, after. Before, after. After. One last thing that I like to do is to bring in a depth map of our background image. If you don't know what depth maps are or how to create them with AI, make sure to check out my other video where I talk about it more in depth. Get it? Import the depth map and pre-compose it. Give it a name and make sure it has the same position and scale value as your background. You can just copy and paste the transform element from your background layer. Now we'll add a displacement map effect to our background layer and point it to the depth map layer. Next, change the horizontal and vertical displacement to luminance. 
Click on the character layer and hit P to bring up its position values. Right click and separate them. Okay, so you'll get two values here, one for X and one for Y. Go back to the displacement map effect, hold the option or alt key and click on the stopwatch. For horizontal displacement, we'll type in value plus the X position of the character layer minus whatever the current value of x is. So here I have 950 and it should be minus 950. Do the same with the vertical displacement. So value plus the y position of the character layer minus 812. Once you do this, you get values that are zero for both. Meaning if you change the character layer's position, whatever that change in value is, it'll be applied to the displacement and you get this. You suddenly have a 3D background. Just make sure to copy and paste the displacement map effect to the lighting layer as well. So it all works together nicely. What's even cooler is that if you change your background comp layer to another image, everything will automatically update as well. Just don't forget to update the depth map when you change the background image. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more. And don't forget to tell me what you found most interesting about this episode in the comments. Stay bouncy and see you in the next one.